I was curious about something. There was a, a blog post that you wrote, a very interesting blog post that kind of sets the stage for uh, the work being done in Africa, where you'd written about a friend of yours um, who uh, her father had passed away and they ran into some problems with keeping track of the real estate and some other uh, rent collector usurped the the business there. Are you... Are you can you tell us about uh, that story a little bit? Can you expand on that? Sure. Yeah, I was being a little coy when I wrote that, but uh, the supposed friend was actually my mother. Um, uh. She inherited uh, she, uh, she inherited uh, some properties from her, her father when um, when he passed away. Um, that was here in Ethiopia. And what followed was the most bizarre um, elongated court process, uh, which went on for about six years, actually. Um, so to lay out the story, what happened was that my grandfather had purchased the land um, maybe 10 years before he passed away. When he did pass away, the person he purchased the land from uh, heard about this and went to the property and started collecting rents, which were actually due to my family. The person also went and bribed the utilities company to change the records um, in the local the local townships uh, to reflect that actually he'd been always paying the utility bills for this 10 year period that you know there'd never been a change in the person listed under the utility with this information he went to the court and contested um contested my mother's ownership of the land uh and without a single a uh, single uh document which could prove without a shadow of a doubt ownership uh because because essentially you could go and bribe people in the courts uh it turned into a six-year process and I think that that was one of the one of the use cases where it just became really clear to me that having a digital land registry, which was based on the blockchain, would be able to deal with many of the trust issues which uh, which plague the Ethiopian legal courts over land disputes. You know, that's interesting that land the land can be recorded in a blockchain in some way. And what I'm used to using, I'm, I'm, I usually use latitudes and longitudes to mark positions on land. And I guess they're going to put the real estate. But I saw some of the research done by uh, Long Finance where the research papers were posted and they found a way of uh, storing latitude and longitude data or where a piece of land is located on the blockchain using smaller pieces of data or more compact ways of doing it. So uh, I'm assuming sometime in the future there will be technologies where that location of land can be recorded in the blockchain using these uh, more compact and precise formats uh, is what I'm assuming. Does anyone, um, anyone know any more about that on how uh, the land data would be stored in a blockchain? Um, I could throw in some thoughts on this. So for me, this isn't a huge issue, right? There's many different ways in which you could uh, record the position of the land. Simple GPS coordinates uh, would be would be satisfactory for this use case. And this isn't a hugely data intensive uh uh, data expensive activity, right? These are just coordinates. So I've never really seen um, uh, seen seen that as a particular issue actually within uh, within this use case. I'd like to add that um, this is very important because the overarching theme for the previous podcasts and people ask these questions all the time about use cases in cryptocurrency in general. And coming from a Western lens, it's sometimes hard to see exactly where you can use crypto and how it can be advantageous to yourself or your business. And um, like, for example, you purchase something just randomly, but there are already payment yeah. rails that exist that are more convenient than than blockchain in general. But when you're moving to developing nations and third world countries, it becomes a little bit more useful because those payment rails haven't been established already. And um, it's interesting that you bring up that story about the land registry because I was actually going to bring up a similar experience. Um, I'm, I, my family comes yeah. from Haiti, and it is a developing, it is a third world country, and um, there are, on my mom's side, there was like six pieces of land. It was insignificant, but parcels of land handed down from probably great grandmother, and when my family left, someone moved in, started taking rent, and you know mm. that person is quote unquote family, but, um, you know, they're, they're a strong man. So nobody really wants to get involved. They're very corrupt. You know, you can end up losing your life and bribery is an all time high. So making sure that these lands get um, attributed to the people that actually own the land is super important. Charles was actually mentioning before in, in an AMA about 
the Syrian conflict and what happens in 50 or 100 years when that conflict ends and people move back and people don't know who owns what. And, yeah. um, you know, it happens. It happens. And, and Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Eritrea, they're, you know, they're, they haven't been always the best of friends. And maybe 50 years, 100 years from now, the people will be more involved with each other. And how, how do you see... How do you see blockchain in general or land registry solving these these warring crises and making sure that the correct people own the correct land? And I don't know if you see a use case in that in that sense. Yeah. So I'm going to be very clear here because uh, whilst there are benefits from having a blockchain based land registry system um, going forward, it doesn't help you agree on what the initial land distribution is, what the correct distribution is. Uh, so within the case which you've given here, if you could get everyone to come in and agree that, okay, this is my piece of land, that's your piece of land, and you could settle all of the disputes you had over land, from then on, a blockchain-based system would help maintain the accuracy of the disputes. But you're going to get there. And in countries where land has been a, a, a significant conflict point and has often driven a lot of, the, a lot of the, the wars or the disputes which you see, that's quite difficult to do. One thing to note is that, you know, one of the reasons this kind of property use case has not caught on as much as uh, one think it might is because it requires significant uh, participation from the government, right? They need to convince everybody and all businesses start adopting and moving into this new system, right? And so far, I'm not sure if there's been any government that's really uh, been willing to make that effort. So it's obviously a, a non-trivial amount of work. And I was wondering for, you know, Africa, are there any countries where the government uh, really feels like they, they are willing to, you know, do the work required to make this happen? Or, or more in general, I guess, how receptive are governments over there to these various ideas? It depends on the country. Uh, some countries are famous for, for being very, very innovative when it comes to technology and being really open to new uh, to new proposals or new tests which involve exciting technology. And Rwanda is a very good example of that. Uh, it's a small country, which means it's quite uh, a self-contained test. And the government is really trying to uh, to drive an agenda of technology and innovation to uh, to develop the country. And actually, just that brings me on to, you know, make it specific for Cardano. Uh, I think that uh, at some point next year, we'll probably be running a land trial uh, in South Africa. So the idea here is that we're going to be doing some projects in the townships, uh, these quite impoverished areas. So we're going to, we're basically just going to stick on uh, this land registry project um, into another project which we're running. So it'll be quite organic. Uh, we'll, the ledger won't be complete at the beginning, but uh, it should be a good way for us to trial the technology.